Okay, cool. So my name is Emily Sabrowski, and I am the new preserve manager at the Smith Family Preserve. It's located in Saratoga Springs, Utah, and it covers 106 acres, and it protects more than 200 prehistoric petroglyphs and multiple features. It's positioned along the bank of Utah Lake next to state-owned land, and it's sometimes referred to as the Utah Lake Knoll. So here we have a picture of in the cowboy hat of Blake Smith, and he is the person who, um, you know what, I just really didn't put my phone on Do Not Disturb, so let me do that really quick. I apologize. I'm at work and I'm just taking a little break to present to you today. All right. Oh, good gravy. <laughs> All right, can you still see my my uh, slideshow? Yep, we sure can. Okay. Are you seeing it in present view still? Yep. Uh, well, it was on present view. Now it switched back. There were in present view. I don't know where my notes went. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Oh, good gravy. <laughs> Chris. Seriously, it's, a, it's the first week of school and I work at a public school district and I work in the transportation department and it has been an interesting busing experience. So we'll just do that. All right, let's kind of start over again. I gave an introduction to the reserve. So Blake Smith here pictured in the cowboy hat is um, one of the people that donated the preserve to the Archaeological Conservancy. And donated that in 2013 on behalf of his family, the Alderbert, Alder, Delbert Doyle Smith family. And uh, Smith, Smith family raised cattle on this land for three generations. And Blake Smith still works the farm that can be viewed from the preserve. And he is here with uh, Randy, who was our longtime preserve manager from 2013 until uh, just this year when he decided to retire and uh, be more of a steward, just a volunteer at the preserve and hand that over to me. So this is my kind of new thing that I'm doing. Um, the primary goal of the Smith family they donated this land as a theological preserve was public education. Their hope was that through stewarding and volunteer activities that young people and children from surrounding communities could learn more about prehistory and just preserving and protecting our, our shared past. And one of the reasons that they wanted to set aside the preserve for this because they saw Saratoga Springs growing and just encroaching southward towards their family farm. We have, since the end of this conference is uh, public outreach, I'm going to kind of cover some of the activities that we do uh, to preserve in the uh, spirit of public outreach. So we have several activities throughout the year that support our goal of, public, of educating the public about prehistory. And first is our public tour series. Of course, this is a little a bit waylaid by COVID, but in a typical year, we'll have about 600 uh, visitors to the preserve. And that's facilitated highly by twice a year when we do public tours on Saturdays in May and October. And these tours are led by our volunteer stewards and they are open to the public. And during these tours, of course, we touch on preservation, protection, and Utah's prehistory. We all use this time to recruit potential new stewards and volunteers. Because of the terrain and primitive trails and the lack of rest facilities on the preserve, we're unable to accommodate large groups of students, like say the entire fourth grade class at a local elementary school. Well, what we try to do is accommodate school clubs and groups and civic organizations. So here we have a National Junior Honor Society, Eagle Mountain, and a Boy Scout troop from West Jordan. So what we try to do is reach out to smaller groups that we are able to accommodate. And we mostly do that through networking and through social media. One of our most successful public outreach endeavors has been enlisting the help of the Archaeological Club from the Blessed Sacrament Click School. It's located in Sandy Utah. And these students, before the pandemic, were doing work on recording sites for our National Register for Historic Places application. And that's been a really successful endeavor, and we have the pandemic slows down in the next couple of years that we can resume that relationship with our um, archaeological club from the Blessed Sacrament Catholic School. We have partnered with part Project Archaeology on several occasions in the past, and I hope as the new preserve manager to continue that relationship and expand it. 
Um, what we do with Project Archaeology is provide a space for them to have an outdoor classroom for teachers to learn more about Utah's prehistory so they can work that into their curriculum. Utah history is fourth grade curriculum. And so we kind of uh, try to work around fourth teachers, but also welcome all teachers to participate in tours through Project Archaeology. As another source of public outreach, each May we plan one or more survey projects on the preserve. In years past, these projects have included capital improvements like the kiosk build that you in this picture and trash pickup along the banks of Utah Lake. Um, as you probably already know, Utah ranks number one in vol volunteerism in the United States. So we find that we are constantly um, sort of competing with other organizations. I saw the Acerson are here. Um, they're some of our stewards, and I know that they volunteer with other organizations as well. So we're, we're really recruiting people who are um, good volunteers and good stewards of the state of Utah. And one of the way that, ways that we can connect those people is through a service project. We are 100% volunteer driven, so um, it is important for us to retain our volunteers. And we do have a small group of very stable stewards and several volunteers that volunteer generally. Um, finally, sort of the way we do our public outreach um, and that we've had some success is through uh, social media, including Facebook and Instagram. We also recently was able to get the Archaeological Conservancy to provide us a website, and they manage that, so we have a less control over that, but we're happy to have something available when people search for a name. However, I'm super excited because I was able to just recently recruit a, a ninth grader who is daughter of one of our stewards to set up on TikTok, which is what all the kids are using these days. So that will be rolling out soon, and you can watch for our videos if you enjoy TikTok. And my email is listed there if you have any questions or are interested in what we do. I'd love to set up a tour for you. And that is my presentation on book outreach at the Smith Family Group. Continuing the trend, Emily, of pithy and short presentations this morning. So thank <laughs> you for that. Hey, I do what I can. <laughs> um, do we have any questions out there? If you're shy, you could drop it in the chat and I can read it. And I won't even try to impersonate your voice. Go ahead. <laughs> um, Chris, I'd like to thank Emily for the work she's doing out there. It's pretty amazing. Randy was awesome getting everything going and we're just enjoying seeing the progress. Uh, we try to be involved as much as we can. But um, it's just so neat to see the progress that's happened with the help of Shippo as well with Elizabeth and her predecessors out there, um, making sure things get done. So I really appreciate that. I like presentations that end in kudos. So kudos, Emily. <laughs> 